Hello again, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy over here for Everyman IT, and today's class is installing a Linux. Uh, this is a relatively short and sweet class on, on how to install Linux. Today we're going to install both the server versions of Linux and the desktop version. So you can just see what the little install process is and see what you get at the end of the day. We are going to be using Ubuntu uh, distribution of Linux. Um, just with all the different distributions that are out there, it is currently the one that, that seems to be the most popular. Um, with all distributions of Linux, you should understand that they all have their own particular quirks. Uh, Ubuntu is no different. Ubuntu has some particular quirks in Linux um, that, that other, other distributions do not have. Through this whole series, we are going to be using Ubuntu. And just keep in mind, if you decide to use a different version of Linux, let's say DSL, or Red Hat, or Fedora, or SUSE, and you go to try to run some of the same commands, uh, th that I'm going to be showing you, they may be slightly different in those versions of Linux. So you may just have to do a little Google search uh, to see how it is that, that you need to run uh, commands. Let's say in um, Ubuntu, you use the apt-get command in order to get and install applications or programs onto the Linux computer. In Red Hat or Fedora, you use the yum command, the Y-U-M. Basically, at the end of the day, it's the same. It's the same stuff that you're doing. Like I say, just they all sometimes use a little bit different commands. So we are going to be using Ubuntu in this process again today. We're going to be installing the server version, and we're going to be install, installing the desktop version. So today we're going to be installing Linux. Like I, I said in the introduction, we're going to be installing server and we're going to be installing the desktop version. Uh, if, you, if you missed the, the introduction to Linux class, let, let me just go over this for a second uh, so that you understand what the different versions are. Uh, and these versions are, are basically the same uh, for, for whatever distro you're using. So whether you're using SUSE or Fedora, etc. The server version of any of these distributions basically is for computers that will only be servers. So this means there'll be web servers or database servers or virtualization servers, file servers, uh, etc. These are not computers that you would be sitting down at and using Firefox to, to go to CNN.com or writing a, a dissertation on. The, the server version of the distributions are used are, are for putting onto computers that are only going to be servers. So th what happens is when you install the, the server version, you should realize that these are stripped down versions of the Linux software. So you are not going to get a graphical user interface. You're not going to get a lot of utilities and such that you may be expecting when you install a server version of the operating system. Basically, when you install the server version, when you get done, all, the, all that you're going to get at the end of it is a little blinking cursor. And if you understand what commands that you need to run in order to make the server do what it needs to do, you'll be fine. If you do not understand what commands you need to input, then you're stuck. All you've got is a flashing cursor. So just realize that the server version of the Linux operating system is for servers. Again, web servers, database servers, virtualization servers. These are for computers that you're going to set up, they're going to be servers, and that you're really, 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 really ever going to touch. So, so with server versions, like I said, you're not using web browsers or any of that. The desktop versions of the Linux operating systems are ones that, that, that make the Linux operating system more user friendly. So they will boot into a GUI or a graphical user interface. You will be looking at something that basically looks like Windows or the Mac OS. So you'll see little files and folders. You'll have nice little pictures. You can double click and right click and left click and do all that kind of stuff. So when you install the desktop version of an operating system, um, like I said, you're, you're going to get something that, that, that is going to look familiar to you and is going to, to work similarly uh, to the Windows uh, operating system. So, so that's the big thing. Server, you get a little blinking cursor. The desktop versions, you get a nice graphical interface. And also, not only does uh, the graphical interface have Firefox built in, but it will also have open office. So if you need to write documents or create PowerPoint presentations, all that kind of stuff is already packaged into the desktop version. So those are the different versions of the operating systems so that you understand what's going on. Uh, give me a second, and then we're going to dive into this class, installing Linux.
Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to install the Ubuntu Server Edition. Now Ubuntu is open source and it is completely free. So whether it's for personal use, whether it's for commercial use, whatever use it's for, you can use Ubuntu Linux for free. There's no maintenance contracts, uh, there, there, there's none of that stuff. All you do is, I'll show you when we go onto the computer, is you go to the Ubuntu website and you download the ISO file uh, from their website. It's about 500 megabytes and then you just you burn that to a disk so so you create a disk from the ISO file so you you, you should know how to do that uh, installing the Linux server installing it is very simple basically all you do is you download the ISO file you create the disk from the ISO file and then you boot off the disk and hit install uh, we're gonna go with that that through that in a second that that's pretty, pretty simple. The main thing to remember with the server edition, again, is at the end of this process, all you're going to get is a little blinking cursor. And if you don't know what commands uh, to, to type in, well, you're kind of stuck. This class is not going to teach you any of those commands. We're just going to install the operating system so, so that you see you know, how this all works. The main thing that you have to understand, so you may be asking yourself, well, if there is a desktop version and there's a server version, you know, why is a server version so bare bones? I mean, geez, it doesn't even have a, have a little graphic interface. Well, the reason is, is in all things computer, whether you're dealing with Macs, whether you're dealing with Windows, or whether you're dealing with Linux, every feature or function is also an attack vector for a hacker. So every additional feature or function that you put onto a computer is a potential weakness that a hacker can manipulate. So like with the, the Mac operating system, although the Mac operating system is very, 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 very secure, very hard to hack, hackers have learned how to hack into Flash that the, uh, the Mac operating system is using and then take over the computer that way. So although the Mac operating system is, is, is just a brick, the, the Adobe Flash is actually security vulnerability and hackers can take control of a Mac computer using uh, the, 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 the Flash software. So basically with Linux servers, since these are servers, the, these are servers that are going to be major web servers, database servers, virtualization servers, you want the server to be as secure as possible. One of the ways you make the, the server secure is by, by not giving hackers opportunity to, to hack anything. So, so basically the less functionality your computer or server has the last hack last opportunity there is for hackers to to compromise your system so that's why uh, like I say that the Linux server operating system is so bare bones you don't even get a graphical user interface so we're gonna go on the computer I'll show you how to go to the Ubuntu website we'll download the ISO file I'll burn the ISO file and then we'll install uh, the server operating system again this is all pretty simple so so just follow along and uh, I'll go on the computer and show you how this is done Okay, so we are now, well, you know, obviously, uh, sitting down at my computer. So the first thing that we need to do is get the Ubuntu server operating system. And again, as I've said before, this is open source and it is free. So it's free for you to use, it's free for your company to use, uh, etc. All you do in order to get the Ubuntu operating system is you go to www.ubuntu.com. Uh, so Ubuntu, e -U -B -U -N -T -U com, and I, I think there's a whole story behind it, but but I, I forget what it is. Now, uh, since we're, we're looking for the server version, we're going to go and we're going to find the link wherever the, the link is to the server. Now with Ubuntu, they're creating numerous versions of Ubuntu to do whole bunches of different stuff. So there's a desktop version of Ubuntu, there's a netbook version of Ubuntu, there's a server version, there's a cloud version. And there's actually a few other versions out there. Uh, so when you go to download uh, the version that, that you want, make sure you download the right one. You know, desktop is different than netbook, which is different than server. So right now, we're just going to download and install the server version of Ubuntu. So we click on server. Uh, and, you know, you get the, the normal screen. And then you click on download. Now from here, it is going to ask you whether you want the 64-bit version or the 32-bit version. Uh, hopefully, if you're trying to figure out uh, how to use Linux, you understand the difference between 64-bit and 32-bit. Uh, if you don't understand the difference between 64-bit and 32-bit, uh, basically, all you have to know is for the server version, you should try to download and install the 64-bit. 
if this does not install onto the computer you're trying to install it on, then download the 32-bit uh, version of the operating system. Basically, the 30 Two bit means uh, it's a special type of processor. Uh, for years and years and years and years, uh, processors were 32 bit processors. Uh, about five or six years ago, almost all processors that were created were 64 bit processors. So if you download the 64 bit version, it should work uh, on your computer. In case it doesn't, you know, if you try to install the 64 bit and it says you don't have a 64 bit CPU, then download the 30, 32 bit version. Uh, you, you can go and do Wikipedia. Wikipedia and, and look at the difference between the, the two. That's that's a whole other class unto itself. But uh, you just pick what version, 64 or 32, and then you click Start Download. And obviously I'm on Chrome right now, and it will start download. Uh, this is a almost a 700 uh, megabyte file. Um, obviously, since it's a class, I've already downloaded this beforehand. But you know, depending on what uh, what internet service provider you're using. Uh, you know, I'm on Comcast, uh, really fast internet. So as you can see down here, it'll take about 38 minutes to download. If you're on DSL, it might take an hour or two. So just realize that although it's free, it is a big file. So depending on the speed of your, your internet service provider, it may take a while. So I'm just going to uh, close out of this, and then we're going to go and install the operating system. Now, again, you know, since you guys are learning Linux, I, I expect that you you do have some understanding of how computers and all that work. So basically, uh, with this, what's going to happen is the Ubuntu ISO, the .iso file, is going to be downloaded. In order uh, to install the operating system, you need to turn that .iso file and burn it to a CD or to a DVD. Then you put that into your computer. You make sure that you boot off the CD. Remember, even some of us old fogies, you know, we forget that sometimes, and the computer will boot directly to the hard drive. Make sure the computer is set up to boot off the CD, and then once it boots off the CD, you can go in and start installing the operating system. So, like I say, I expect you guys to know how to do this. You download the ISO file, you burn the ISO file to a disk, you throw the disk into a computer uh, and make sure it boots off the CD. If you do that, the rest of this process is pretty easy. So we're going to close out of this. And now, just so you understand what's going on, I am using something called a virtual computer. So this is where a computer runs inside of a computer. You will see the everything that I'm, I'm showing you, you are going to see basically the exact same screen when you go to install Ubuntu yourself. I'm just using this to, to make it easier. So I have done the equivalent. I've put the disk into the computer. I have booted the computer and I have booted off of the CD. And this is the screen that I get. It is now asking me what language uh, I want to install this for. So do I want it in the Netherlands or Norsk Bokmal? Uh, well, I don't know, even know what the hell Norsk Bokmal is, so I will stay with English. And all I have to do is now hit enter. And now, as you see, install Ubuntu server, uh, install enterprise cloud, check disk for defects, etc. What we're going to do is we are going to simply install the Ubuntu server. And we'll hit enter. Uh, I don't know, it's asking for the language again, English. Um, choose your country or territory, United States. Um, it'll ask if you want to detect the keyboard layout. No, that's fine. Uh, origin of the keyboard, USA. Keyboard layout, USA. So this is basically asking what type of keyboard you have. Um, you know, remember, this is an international operating system. You may have some Zimbabwean I don't know, backwards, upside down keyboard. So basically all that was asking you is what kind of keyboard do you have? Uh, all this stuff is running. Okay, now the host name, uh, now this basically, um, all this is is the computer name. So in Windows, you normally call computers by their computer name. Uh, here in the Linux world, it's the host name. So we'll just call it Ubuntu Server. So that is now uh, the, the name of this computer and hit enter. Oops, let me go back. We'll just call it a server. Server. Uh, based on your present, you know, what time zone do you want? Is this time zone correct? Yes. Um, so it'll ask, uh, how do you want your hard drive set up? Right now, 
Uh, don't use the use entire disk and set up LVM. We'll go over LVM at a different class. Just say guided use entire disk. Um, some of that stuff can get a, get a little confusing later. So select disk to partition, you know, SCSI 3. Write these, and this is, it'll ask you, you know, like most things, do you, do you actually want to do what are the, these changes to the disk? You will say yes. Basically through this process, really, all you have to do is say yes. Uh, you know, I, I know you're seeing a lot of screens go by. And you're like, oh, Eli, Eli, slow down, slow down. What are you doing? It's like, no. Uh, basically say yes, uh, and, and you're going to be doing fine. Even with that whole where I said change it to uh, for the hard drive, guided, use the entire disk. You could have used guided, use the entire disk, including LVM. Like I say, just, just right now. I would say just to use guided, use the entire disk. It might make life a little easier in the end. But basically, all you have to understand is yes. If you if you answer yes and United States for everything, you're going to be fine. Uh, so this is all clicking through. Uh, now, depending on um, what kind of computer, what kind of hardware you're putting this on, this can either be a very quick process or a relatively slow process. And that's that's the funny thing with Linux, is I mean you could be throwing this thing on anything from the most modern computer, you know, the the three thousand dollar server you just bought from Dell, to the server that was three thousand dollars twelve years ago that you bought from Dell. So so. Really, I mean, that's that's one of the nice parts with Linux, and especially with the server version of Linux, is you can throw this on literally anything. Um, and, and for most of the things that you're going to be doing, it'll probably work well on almost anything. Like, uh, like if if all you're doing is a web server, if you decide you want to throw up a little website and, and run it from your house, you could throw that onto some some ten year old computer. And I mean, unless you have the next YouTube going on, it will work fine. Uh, that's the nice part with Linux is it's, it doesn't use a lot of resources because again, especially with the server version, as you'll see, um, it doesn't have to use a lot of resources for, for non-necessary things. Like I say, there is no graphical user interface. There's no, there's no background process or there are background processes, but there, there you know, there aren't a hundred background processes happening. Basically the server does exactly what you tell it to do. So if you if you set it up to be an Apache web server, all it's going to do is be an Apache web server. And since that's all it does, um, it, it doesn't need a whole lot of resources. So this is clicking along. And that's one thing too, as you will see, uh, as I said before, uh, we, we are um, setting this up into a virtual computer. If you are thinking about using a virtual computer uh, to play around with installing Linux and maintaining Linux, uh, I would suggest you use this virtual box. Uh, it was originally made by Sun Microsystems and now Oracle bought Sun. So just do a Google search on where to find VirtualBox, but it is open source, it is completely free. And the nice part is with it is it works well with Linux. Uh, I like Virtual PC that Microsoft makes. Again, it's completely free uh, for Windows products, for you know ser Windows servers, Windows XP, Windows 7. But it doesn't really work that well uh, with Linux for some reason. So I found VirtualBox, like I say, it was by Sun, now by Oracle. It's open source, it's free, and it works very, very, very well uh, with, with the Linux operating systems. So now uh, it's going to ask for the full name of the new user. I'll just put in Eli, the computer guy. Continue. Username for your account, so we'll just go with Eli. Choose a password, one, two, three, four, five, six. Continue, verify, one, two, three, four, five, six. You entered a password, use a, pa basically it's saying that this is a weak password. This is a pathetic password. Anybody could hack this password. But since this is just a test computer, that is fine with me. So I'll say, yes, use a weak password. Uh, okay, you may configure your home directory for encryption. Uh, remember what encryption means is that it will actually encrypt the files and folders that you put into your home directory. So your home directory is like the documents and settings directory 
in Windows. So this is where you know your documents or your your application, a lot of stuff gets stored. Here's the issue: since you're brand new. Uh, to using Linux, I would suggest that you do not encrypt your home directory because if you encrypt your home directory and then you crash your Linux computer, uh, your data is probably going to be gone. If you don't encrypt your directory and you do something dumb, then you can pull the hard drive out and you can recover your data pretty easily. If you encrypt that directory, it's encrypted. It's coded. When the Linux operating system dies, your data goes with it. So right now, I would say do not encrypt your home directory. Once you know what you're doing, you can encrypt it. Right now, don't. Okay, if you need to use a proxy server to access the outside world, we don't. Okay, it is now asking uh, how frequently uh, do you want uh, updates to happen. So even with Linux, you know, we, we all laugh at, at Microsoft with how many uh, uh, updates uh, they put out, you know, every week or every month. Well, Linux needs updates too. So this is asking you, do you want, uh, just like with Windows, with automatic updates, do you want automatic updates to be installed? Um, yes or no. So either no automatic updates or install security updates automatically. I would say, again, since you're brand new to this, uh, I would say no automatic updates. Uh, again, Linux is very stable, very secure. If you go in every couple of months and do the, the updates uh, uh, manually, I think you'll be fine. Uh, so I would say don't do automatic updates because remember, the automatic updates, if they install and there's a problem with one, then your web server that was just working fine the other day has, has now crashed. So I would say, again, at this point in the game, do no automatic updates. Okay, now here, uh, we, we aren't actually going to do any of this because this will be for another class. Within this process, it is actually asking you, what kind of server do you want this server to be? Do you want it to be a DNS server? Do you want it to be a LAMP server, basically a web server? Do you want it to be a mail server, uh, an SSH server, a uh, database server, print server, Samba server? All that kind of stuff. Right now, we're not going to do anything um, because uh, because I'll show you how to do that later. If you knew what you were doing, let's say you wanted this to be a web server, you could just highlight the, the, the LAMP server and hit the space bar, and that would select the LAMP server. So LAMP basically means web server. Uh, LAMP means Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP server. When you check this, this means it will automatically install all the components you need for that Apache web server. Because like I say, in the Linux world, they don't want to install anything that you're not going to use. So basically, in the Windows world, Microsoft, when you install their operating system, they throw in everything, including the kitchen sink and your neighbor's kitchen sink and your grandma's kitchen sink. They just throw everything in when you install the operating system. So it's there. Uh, the good part is is that it's there, so so you don't have to install a, a lot of stuff when you first set up the computer. The bad part is, remember, as I've said, every single component that gets installed onto a computer is a security hole or a security vulnerability. So, so in the Windows world, they install all this stuff. It's good for you, but it's also a security vulnerability. In the Linux world, they're much more worried about security, so they don't install anything unless you want it to be installed. So right now, we will un uncheck the LAMP server, and then we'll just hit continue. So, so this is just a bare-bones server we're creating. Now, this is something uh, called the Grub Bootloader. So a lot of people... Uh, you know, they, they may love Linux, they may adore Linux, they may think uh, the entire world should run on the Linux operating system, but they are realists and know they also need to use uh, Windows every once in a while. So what they do is they create dual boot computers. So dual boot computers mean you can either boot into Windows or you can boot into Linux. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. You can, you can subdivide your computer and you can have 10 different operating systems on your computer. And when you boot your computer, you can select between those operating systems. So what this is asking now is it says, you know, it seems like this is the only operating system on the computer. Uh, what would you like us to do? Uh, 
right now, like, you know, as I keep saying, uh, do yes. If you're doing a dual boot machine, you know, that'll be another class, but basically understand the grub boot loader. What it's asking is, is this a dual boot machine? Um, so we just uh, click next. Okay, so uh, we're, we're now here. Uh, installation is finished. See, that's, that's pretty simple. Just remember, uh, answer yes for everything and USA for everything. And, and you're pretty, pretty good. Uh, we hit continue. And now it's booting. And look at that. See? Server login. So I do Eli. And I do password. One, two, three, four, five, six. And look at that. That is Ubuntu server. So, you know, as I talked about before with people who install uh, you know, Linux server, and then they don't know what the hell to do with it once they've installed it. This is why, because this is what you get. No graphical user interface, uh, nothing. All you get is something that looks like a DOS screen or a terminal terminal screen. Uh, I can show you it does do stuff like top. Uh, this is basically the, the version of Task Manager. So this is Task Manager in a Linux server environment. Um, but we'll go into all of that later. We'll get out of that. Uh, this is uh, Linux server. So this is this is how Linux server will look whenever you install it. Uh, this this particularly particularly is Ubuntu server edition. So if you download and install the server edition, this is going to be what you get uh, once the installation is done. You will be sitting here again, as I said, you'll be looking at a little cursor blinking at you, and if you don't know what commands to put in, uh, you're kind of stuck. So so with that, we'll go back out to the outside world. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the desktop version and then we'll come back here into the little virtual computer world and we will install the desktop version of the Ubuntu uh, Linux operating system. Like I say, when we install the Ubuntu, the, the desktop version, that will give you a nice pretty little little graphical interface that, that you'll probably like a lot better than this. So, uh, so let's go back out to the real world and uh, talk about the desktop version. See, uh, you know, that's not so bad, so bad, you know, installing the Linux server version is, is pretty easy. So, uh, so, you know, I showed you how to download the software and how to install it. And I showed you that little blinking cursor you get. Uh, so don't worry, don't worry. In the next classes, I will show you what to do past that point. Again, Linux is pretty simple as long as you know what the commands are. Next classes, what we're going to do is we'll show you the commands. So now I'm going to show you how to install the desktop version of the Ubuntu distribution. So when you install this version, at the end of it, like I say, you're going to get a nice graphical user interface, a GUI. There'll be little files and folders. You can do, you know, Firefox and open off it and, and all of that. Now, again, it's a, it's a pretty simple procedure. You just click a few buttons, etc. cetera. Uh, the main thing I want you to be cautious about is, is when you install this, like I say, you're gonna be like, wow, this is free. Look, I get Firefox and I get OpenOffice. I can do all this stuff for free. I should tell everybody about this. I should install this on everybody's computer. Again, I fully support the Linux project. I, I, I think this is where the future is going to be. I think by 2020, everybody will be on Linux and, you know, Mac and Windows and all that will be in the trash can. But right now, Linux eh, ain't quite there yet. Uh, there are bugs, there are problems, there are quirks, there are freeze ups, etc. So before, you know, you wipe your main computer and install Linux on it and just dive into the Linux world, use a Linux computer for a week or two to see what the problems are. Again, I mean, it's, it's come a long way. It looks very nice. And for some things, it's very functional. But even, you know, compared to Windows 7 or the Mac OS, it's still, it's still not quite there as an operating system. But uh, let, let's go onto the computer. I'll show you how to, how to download the software. And then again, we're going to install the desktop version of the Ubuntu operating system. So now we're going to install the Ubuntu desktop uh, version. So we're, we're back at Ubuntu.com, U-B-U-N-T-U.com. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different versions, so we are going to select the desktop version. Uh, 
from here, you know, you just look for the little download link. So click on the download link. It'll ask you 32-bit uh, or 64-bit. For the desktop version, generally I just go for, for the 32 bits fine. Um, I'm going to actually do the, the 64 bit here. And then you just click download. So you select what version and then you download it. If you don't know what the difference is between 32 bit and 64, do whatever they recommend. Um, and you hit start download. And so as you can see down here, it is downloading. And again, this is 697.6 megs. Uh, sized file so you know although it is free etc um, it's going to take a little while to download so we'll close out of this uh, now again as i talked about with the server so i downloaded that dot iso file i burned that iso file to a disk i threw that disk into a computer and i booted off the cd drive again in my little world i'm actually using a virtual computer but if you were in the real world, that's what you would do. You burn the ISO file to a disk, throw that disk into a computer, boot off the CD drive. Seems like it should be easy, but most people get confused on some of this stuff. Now, the, the very interesting part uh, you will see here is you see you can see it says try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. Now, the curious thing uh, with Linux, which is really cool, is they have this thing called live CDs. What a live CD means is that the entire operating system is on the CD. You can actually boot from the CD and run the operating system. So when you're dealing with Windows or you're dealing with Linux Server Edition, you always have to install the operating system for it to work on the computer. With a live CD, you can actually boot straight off a CD and use all the functionality uh, of the operating system. So you can, you know, surf the web, web with Firefox and uh, create uh, documents and all that kind of stuff. So that's what a live CD is. You boot off the CD and you can actually use the computer uh, based on the operating system that's on the CD. And it doesn't affect the computer at all. So if you have a Windows computer, you can put in a Linux live CD. You can boot off the live CD, do whatever you want to do, and it doesn't affect uh, the, the computer at all. And so it's kind of cool. Uh, you know, right now, since, uh, since I'm showing you how to install this stuff, we'll just do the install. So we will go down and do the install Ubuntu. Uh, and of course, we're, it's, it's in English. If, if you're doing Swahili, then by all means, say Swahili. Uh, so it'll ask you the time zones and all that. You just click forward. Uh, again, the keyboard layout, they're really worried about the keyboard layouts. So suggested option USA, you just say, yep. Uh, where do you want to put Ubuntu? Just, uh, just erase and use the entire disk. Again, you can specify partitions manually, but it's an advanced thing. If you don't know what you're doing, just don't do it. Just erase and use the entire disk and then hit forward. What is your name? Eli, the computer guy. Uh, so what do you want, name do you want to use to log in? It's Eli. Uh, password, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, strength, fair. <laughs> really fair for one, two, three, four, five, six. Interesting. And then what is the name of this computer? Uh, remember, in the server, it called it a host name. And here, it's just saying what the name is. So Eli Desktop. We'll just get rid of that Eli part and we'll just say desktop. So this is going to be the name of the computer. Uh, and then down here, when you scroll down, this, this is an interesting part, um, is you can do login automatically, require my password to log in. What this does is if you click login automatically, then when the computer boots, you will log in automatically. If you do require my password to log in, then you will have to plug in a password. Depending on what you plan to do with your computer, uh, it really depends on, on what you want. Uh, like a data recovery computer, like an appliance that I was using, uh, you know, all the time, I would probably say log in automatically just to make my life easier. You know, if I actually had a file server that people weren't supposed to be playing around with, then I would say, you know, they have to manually log in. This just gives you, it tells you what it's about to do. And then you hit install. Okay, so after a few minutes, uh, you know, uh, all the files uh, get installed and installation is complete. Uh, basically, you know, 
restart now. So all you do is you click restart now. Again, the actual time for the process um, that this will take will depend on your, your hardware. Do realize you should look at the hardware requirements for the desktop version of the Ubuntu operating system. Remember, the server version is very stripped down. There, there's almost nothing to it, really. The desktop version has all these fancy graphics um, and, and all of this stuff. So this actually does require pretty decent hardware. If it was me, I would, I would require that uh, if you're going to use Ubuntu, the desktop version, that you have a computer at least four or five years or younger with at least 512 megs of RAM. Uh, if you have any less than that, it may not have uh, the resources it requires to run. So remember, the server version doesn't require very much because frankly it doesn't do a whole hell of a lot. Uh, the, the desktop version, you get all these pretty graphics and animations and all that, and that does require actual hardware power from your computer. So. With a server version, you can use a computer that's 12 years old. With the desktop version, I would say use a relatively new computer. Uh, five or six years old uh, will, will probably do fine for you. Uh, so now you just click on, you know, click on your name, password, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you hit log in. And now you have something, again, like I say, that vaguely looks like a uh, like you know windows or the mac operating system so we can see applications so your tabs are up here so you can see you know accessories you have a calculator so i can click on calculator and look 555 divided by 666 equals uh, 0.833. Woohoo! Uh, you click on applications. You have games. You know, hey, they don't want to be outdone by windows you have the graphics uh, internet so you have firefox IM clients, the whole nine yards. You have Office. So this comes with the open Office word processor. This is like uh, Microsoft Word. Uh, open Office spreadsheet. This is like Microsoft Excel. Open Office presentation, which is uh, like uh, PowerPoint. They also have Evolution Mail and Calendar, which is, I will give them credit, Evolution is very good. Uh, it's a lot like Outlook, and it's, it's basically Linux's version of Outlook. You go to places. So this is how you can navigate through your computer. So you have your home folder, or you can click on computer. So computer is the equivalent of my computer. So I click on this, and you'll see file system. So this is the equivalent of C drive. You double click, and look at that. You have lots of folders, you know, ETC, which we'll talk about before, apt. You know, so you can double click and navigate basically like you would in Windows or, or um, or Mac. You can either go up one folder level or you can go back. You can even do uh, icon view so you can say I want to do list view and you can you can list stuff. Uh, if you want to use the internet you know you just click on Firefox and look at that. We can always go to my favorite www.cnn.com and look at that. We are now looking at cn.com Moms to cups. I suffocated my children. Lovely. Uh, so that is the, the Ubuntu desktop version. Again, we're going to have classes and we're going to go into this more and more and more and more. I am just giving you the briefest of introductions to this uh, so that basically you understand how to install uh the different versions. Again, server version, at the end of it, it gives you a blinking cursor, and God help you if you don't know what to do. Uh, with the desktop version, and like I say, you get this nice little graphical interface. And don't feel bad if you want to use a desktop version. I know a lot of the, like, the, the diehard Linux people out there, uh, they, they look down on people who use the desktop version. <laughs> who needs graphics? Well, I, I like graphics, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, so understand, you're not weak, you're not pathetic, you're not any of that if you want to use the desktop version. The difference between the server and the desktop version is the desktop version will use more resources, it does have more installed, and so it can have some more, more security holes. On the other hand, frankly, it's a lot easier to use if you're used to coming from a Windows environment. The main thing to remember is in the Linux world, most of the real administration still happens at the command prompt. So, so even though this is a nice graphical environment, most 
when you really get into to administering Linux, you still have to run specific commands. All you have to remember then is that when you're using the desktop version, you go to Applications, Accessories, and then you go down here to Terminal. Terminal gives you the terminal prompt. Uh, remember this from uh, from when I was showing you the, the server installation? And this is where you can run the real command. So if you need to, to start really you know hammering the server, doing some impressive stuff, you would go to Applications, Accessories, Terminal. That gets you to this terminal prompt. And this is where you can do the, the, the really hardcore or even some of the, the, the really simple stuff that you're going to need to do in order to administer the Linux computer. So so this is the, the Ubuntu Desktop Edition. Uh, like I say, pretty easy. If you have a, if a modern computer, you can get it installed in uh, in less than half an hour. And, uh, and that, that's really all there is to it. The, the, the before, before I go out of here, though, when you do put the CD into the computer and you boot off the CD, you do have the option between, like I say, the live CD or the install. I showed you how to do the install because, of course, this is a class on how to install Linux. If you click on that Try Ubuntu or use the live CD version, that boots off the CD. It does not change anything on the hard drive. So if, if you just want to play around with Linux, um, but you don't want to actually install it, you can boot off that live CD and it won't do anything at all to the hard drive. You don't have to worry about damaging your computer or installing it over an operating system. So that's just something to remember. So with that, uh, let's go back out to the, the, the real world and uh, talk about a couple other things. So that's all there is uh, to installing the uh, Ubuntu Linux uh, desktop version. So in this class today, uh, I've showed you how to install the server version of the Ubuntu distribution and the desktop version of the Ubuntu distribution. It's pretty simple. You download the ISO file, you burn a disk, you throw the disk into the computer, you boot off the disk, and you, you, you install it. It's really simple. It's going to get a lot more complicated uh, after this. Again, as you saw, if you install the server version, all you get is that little blinking cursor at the end of the installation. In the next classes, we're going to show you what to do with that little blinking cursor. With the desktop version, I mean, as I showed you, you can use, you know, Firefox, you can use OpenOffice. All of this stuff is there. It is completely free. Uh, so this is the open source, you know, we talked about in the first class. Open source is not necessarily free. Everything within the Ubuntu distribution is free. You just get to use it. You download it and you use it completely 100% free. And like I say, for some things, uh, the Linux is very, very, very good. Other things, eh, Linux ain't so good. But this was the class installing Linux, you know, show you how easy it is. The rest of these classes are going to be similarly easy. You know, we're just going to we're just going to focus on certain parts of the Linux operating system and, and you'll see how all this works in no time. So as always, I'm Eli the Computer Guy over here for Everyman IT. I really enjoyed uh, teaching this class today and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.